Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Kaiju Weekly, the weekly podcast that introduces you to the wide world of giant monster movies. I am your host, Travis, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Bombadil Cumberbatch. Hello, Governor. <laughs> How are you doing today? That sound, that's horrible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all our <laughs> British listeners. Please forgive me. Oh, Riley's going to come after you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. He is. <laughs> oh, man. It's going to be a fun episode. It's a very special episode that we've got this week. So uh, we hope that you guys are ready. I'm ready. I mean, I don't know if the listeners are going to be prepared. I don't know if the listeners are fully prepared for it or not, but I'm at least ready. Yep, I'm ready too. So let's cover some news. All right. The BDBD? No, 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 no. We're not queuing the BDBD today. No, BDBD? No. no. Oh, yeah, the, the Gauss. The Gauss Gauss. <laughs> Gauss Gauss. <laughs> um, so yeah, the only news item that we're going to talk about on the main episode today is uh, we're going to talk about the results from Kaiju Clash. So last, not last week, but two weeks ago, we had a Kaiju Clash uh, that was Gyra against the Toho King Kong Escapes King Kong. And we put that up to a vote. We battled it out here on the episode, and then we put it up for a vote on Twitter and on Facebook, and Toho King Kong overwhelmingly won. You, the listener can't see this, but I'm just going to describe to you that right now I'm doing my happy dance, <laughs> doing my victory dance, because Travis, do you care to tell our dear listeners what the current score is now? Uh, the current score is what is it? Four to one. <laughs> wait, is there? Wait, you won one? Yeah, Baragon, the very first one. Oh, you did, did you? You uh -huh, did. Uh, yeah, don't you? Justice for Baragon. Hashtag justice for Baragon. <laughs> Do not forget. <laughs> we will never forget. Um. Yeah. So I I won one, and uh, Michael has won four. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, the, the score, the final score for this one was 45 to 15 on the Facebook group, the Kaiju Groupie Facebook group. Uh, so, yeah, Gyra got annihilated uh, wow. in the votes. And he didn't get annihilated. He got just destroyed. He got, yeah, he got, uh, it's like, it's he like, he got a Kaiju enema. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to shut up now. Uh, uh, anything after that. <laughs> and so, uh, and on Twitter, 60% of the votes went to Toho King Kong and 40% went to Gyra. Uh, so yeah, I still think, I still think the majority of people are not actually listening to our episodes and our fights and, uh, and just voting on which one they like the most. That's so, fine. As long as I keep winning, I don't care. <laughs> so uh I, I pulled out two uh comments one is uh in in uh defense of kong and one is in defense of gyra and i'm going to read those out just to show the thought process that people went through when they were voting so we have a comment on our facebook or no not facebook uh youtube channel uh on the video that was the kaiju clash uh, and it was from David Brown, and he said, such an interesting pair. Knowing Gyra, he's more furious and probably has the same level of intellect as Kong. So mm -hmm. I say Gyra wins. So thank you, David, for being correct. Absolutely. Well. <laughs> almost got uh, you there. <laughs> yeah, you, all, you almost did. You almost did. But thank you, David. We appreciate that. Yeah, we always appreciate your comments on our YouTube videos. Um, and then O'Reilly uh, Carol from the Facebook group commented and said, even after the arguments provided in the podcast, I still think that Kong dumping him into a volcano is the funniest thing ever. So he went with Kong. Of course, O'Reilly went with course, Kong. Of course, thank you. I could, you know, that is one vote I can always count on is O'Reilly to vote for his his monkey brother and wait, hang on, back up. His his favorite kaiju or dai kaiju. There you go, Henry. His favorite dai kaiju, King Kong. 
Mm -hmm. So that's our results for Kaiju Clash. Our next Kaiju Clash is probably going to be next week. Um, so we're not doing one this week because we want to spend majority of the time focused on our main topic. And, oh, and our one. yeah, one. so our main topic this week is Gamera 101. Everything you need to know about Gamera, but we're too afraid to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah, that's yes it. yeah mm -hmm. because the arrow blu-ray set for the gamma movies is coming out uh in a couple of weeks and yep. because gamma has been getting a lot of traction on the internet lately and because we want this podcast to be available to people who are not just diehard Daikaiju fans who watch every single thing, uh, but also to people who are new or who maybe only like King Kong or only like Godzilla. Uh, mm -hmm. So we want to make this available to them. So we decided that we would take this opportunity to go through and talk about Gamera as a whole the entire franchise, the character, everything, to give everyone a primer on what Gamera is, what he's about, and just everything you need to know. Right. And hopefully we will do, hopefully by the end of this episode, Travis, they will either love Gamera more than they already do, or want to, want to find out more about this gigantic radioactive turtle. Yes. And that gets us into our first bit because uh, we're going to break this down into questions. Um, so we've got who, what, when, where, and why, and we're going to start and how, uh, and we're going to, uh, start with the who. So who is Gamera? Uh, and I'll start with that one. In basic terms, Gamera is a giant turtle kaiju that's produced as a competitor to Godzilla by the studio's Daiei. Yeah. Uh, he started in 1961, was it? 65. 65, that's right, uh, with the first Gamera movie. And it was in direct competition with Toho and their Godzilla franchise. Now, Michael, that's the real world uh, origin of Gamera. In the films, who is Gamera? Well, it depends on what, it really depends on which mythos you follow. Uh, because there's actually, there's sort of two, but they run, but they're, but they're very similar. So yeah, as far as the Showa era is concerned, uh, Gamera is a, a gigantic, ancient, prehistoric turtle Awakened, uh, awoken, awaken. One of those words is correct. Um, by insert as necessary, <laughs> insert as necessary. There we go to all of our English majors out there. Um, awoken by uh, radiation or radioactive testing. Uh, I think it was in Ant the first film takes place in Ant in Antarctica. There we go. Um, and the second sort of mythos, if you follow more of the, the Heisei, if you're more familiar with sort of the Heisei trilogy, which is within the 90s trilogy and onward, uh, Gamera was actually created by an ancient race to protect themselves from another creature that they created for some ungodly reason named Gauss. So Gamera was created to be a response to another a creature created by this ancient civilization called Gauss. Um, and then in the later, in, in, in the later series, the Heisei, the Heisei trilogy, the Heisei, the Heisei era of Gamera, uh, he's perceived as more of a mystical, uh, godlike creature. Whereas in the Showa era, it's more, it's sort of, sort of distilled down to its basic radioactive, ancient, uh, dinosaur like turtle. Right. Yeah. And, and he's, he's essentially just the protector of earth Pretty is much. what he becomes in, in both the Showa and Heisei. And for anyone who is new, cause like I said, I want this podcast to be um, accessible to people who are new to Kaiju and uh, new to Gamera. But uh, if you don't know what we mean when we say Showa and Heisei, uh, the Showa era, J Japanese history is divided up into the eras by which the emperor uh, who's on the throne of Japan is ruling, whichever one is ruling at the time. The Showa era started uh, pre-World uh, War II and went through until the 
eighties. Mm-hmm. He was the longest reigning emperor, uh, the Showa emperor. And so, so any movie that came out during that time period is called a, you know, it's called a Showa era film. Uh, and Godzilla is also broken up into those. Any Japanese film or TV show is broken up into these eras because uh, they they like to do that in Japan. It's kind of how in America we may say during the Nixon era or during the Reagan era. And the Heisei started in the 80s and went on. And actually, officially, the Heisei era didn't end until 2019 when the Reiwa Emperor was enthroned uh, when he took the throne. So, uh, so that's just a, a breakdown of what those mean. Hopefully I explained that properly. Yeah. And technically uh, if I'm, we're getting kind of a little off topic here, but didn't technically the Showa era didn't really end until what? 1985. Yeah. Showa. I, I'm wanting to say Showa didn't end until like 89 actually, or something mm-hmm. like that. And so, yeah, we, uh, it, with the Godzilla films, we, tend to say that the Re- the the Heisei era started with Godzilla 1984 mm-hmm. but that actually was still the Showa era it had not ended yet um by that point but and I think just- that's because there's there was such a huge gap between Terror of Mechagodzilla which was in 75 and mm-hmm. then 10 years later you've got Return of Godzilla 85 right and that started a new um, ongoing continuity in the Godzilla films. It was kind of like a reboot of the Godzilla film franchise. So that's why it's kind of grandfathered into the Heisei. Um, but with the Gamera, the Gamera series of uh, films, uh, all of the Showa films did come out in the Showa era. And then there was a huge gap. And then in the 90s, they made a trilogy of films that was all directed by the same director. And mm-hmm. then they had another film that came out in 2004. Was it 2004? Uh, yes. 2000 and something. Yeah, it was. When, I'll have to look this up. Um, hang on. Let me. But all of those, those are the Heisei films is all I was getting, getting yeah. to. So uh, if you're, if you're just getting into these Japanese giant monster films, uh, that's how the monster that's how these Japanese ones are divided up. So if you hear people talk about it that way, just so you have a primer of what, uh, what each, what, what those words mean. Yeah. And to piggyback off of what we were just talking about, Gamera or the brave, which is the final Gamera film was in 2006, 2006. Okay. Uh, it's final Gamera film so far. (laughs) <laughs> so far but hopefully hopefully fingers crossed fingers crossed come on um, there in warner brothers yeah i know um so now getting into another question that we had who is your favorite gamma villain talking about the kaiju in specific the monsters uh, so michael what is your favorite kaiju villain for gamma that is very tough um i okay so as far as like the cool factor like who i feel like is the coolest villain like in the entire franchise i'm gonna have to go with iris um mm-hmm. in the in the final film and gamma from gamma 3 the final film of the heisei trilogy um i'm gonna have to go with iris as as far if i'm just kind of just saying as just flat out cool factor iris now, if I want to say who I believe is the most, who who I like the most and who I believe is the most important uh, other Daikaiju in the franchise, I'm going to have to go with Gauss because I compare, to me, uh, Gamera, or I'm sorry, Gauss is to Gamera as King Ghidorah is to Godzilla. They are arch rivals who pop up constantly in the franchise and that's why I pick. That's why I pick Gauss. If I had to give an honorable mention, uh, maybe the knifehead kaiju known as Giron. Oh yeah, Giron or Guiron. He's he's awesome. Um, me, I, I Gauss is great. Uh, Iris is great. Legion is absolutely fantastic. And we'll get into some more about those different kaiju in just a second. But my favorite one has to be uh, Berugan. Not Baragon, okay. that's from the Godzilla franchise, Barugon. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, because he's a monster that destroys things with the power of rainbows. 
I, I can't, I can't <laughs> not love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's fun. It's a, it, we, we did a whole, um, we did a whole review with Alex and Eric on their show, monsters versus men, where we discussed, uh, Gamera versus Barugon. And it was a lot of fun. And really, uh, Barugon is one of the best Showa era Gamera films. There's only, to me, in my opinion, this is strictly my opinion, there's only maybe three or four Showa era Gamera films that are worth watching. The rest of them are just kind of take them or leave them. Um, but we'll probably get into that a little bit later into this discussion. But yeah, Gamera versus Barugon is a lot of fun. Yeah, it really is. And that episode of Monsters vs. Men was a lot of fun to record. And so I encourage anyone who hasn't, go check out the Monsters vs. Men podcast. Right now they're going through uh, the Gamera franchise, movie by movie. Uh, and they've never seen any of the Showa-era Gamera films. Eric uh, on there has never seen any Gamera films uh, mm-hmm. until these until they started watching them so uh check them out and check out the barugan episode with us on it because we had a lot of fun yeah. uh stay till after the after the closing theme song <laughs> because there's a little bonus thing at the end of that episode that oh man was it was it crazy i, uh, I die laughing I, I i i die laughing every time i i hear that sometimes if i need a good uh, if i need a good laugh i'll just put that episode on fast forward to the end and just listen to that final three or four minutes. And I'm like, Oh Jesus, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's nuts. <laughs> um, but, we, but yeah, but Travis, we also wanted to get sort of the community involved in this episode too, in a, in a way. So I went ahead and I think, was this our Twitter question or was this the Kaiju groupie question? This about... was a groupie. This was the Facebook. Okay. Yeah. We asked the Kaiju groupie Facebook group. Who... Oh wait, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. This was, this was the Twitter one. This, this was, was the Twitter, Twitter one. one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll let you take care of this one. Uh, we asked basically the, we asked our Twitter followers who they thought was their favorite uh, Daikaiju from the Gamera series aside from Gamera himself. Yeah. And we had a lot of response. So I'll try to get through them as quick as possible. So we don't drag this episode out too much. Yep. Um, but uh, Nick from the G force podcast, uh, he said Legion for sure. That suit is incredible and he's exactly right. And he's not alone in saying Legion because Madison Russell on uh, Twitter said that she would probably go with Legion or Barugan. Mm hmm. And Nathan from the Monster Island Film Vault said either Legion or Iris. But then he also gives an honorable mention to Zetas mm-hmm. from Gamera the Brave. Uh, Kaiju Transmissions. Uh, I forget which one of them actually sent this in. Was it, was it Matt or Kyle? Uh, I think it was Bird. Was it Kyle? Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, Legion and Gauss. Uh, were the two that he picked one was from the Heisei and one from the Showa uh, he that's that was his two picks Henry from the uh, it came from a monster film podcast which you uh, our monster movie podcast uh, you interviewed recently on your podcast that and that episode should be coming up soon huh in a, in a few weeks uh, in a few weeks okay in a few okay weeks. but uh, so look forward to that uh, but he said Zegra Zetas or Iris? He's got a Z thing. He likes the he Z, Z ones. <laughs> he's and he says he's also grown to really appreciate Legion. Uh, Legion Legion gets a lot of love. Legion is a hugely loved um, kaiju just because of the design and the way that it moves and the way it's done. It is a fantastic puppet and uh, and suit design. Yeah. Um, Luke from the Earth Destruction Directive said Barugan, although I also dig Viras and Jigar. Okay. All and then, respectable mentions. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Chris, the beach bum, said Super Gauss is my favorite. She's a perfectly written villain kaiju, but he also loves Barugan and Zira. So nice. uh, Super Gauss is the one from the Heisei period, uh, the Heisei era. The um, Gamera, the Guardian of the Universe. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's the one that, so his was specifically the Heisei uh, Gauss that he liked. Yeah. Not to be confused with Space Gauss from Versus Giron in the show era. 
Right, which was just a a gauss suit that was painted silver. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, David, the kaiju apostle, uh, also said. Now he said we did stipulate not Gamera, but he picked. He kind of uh, fudged the rules a little bit, and he picked Toto from the Gamera the Brave movie, which is Gamera, but he's not called Gamera. So I'll let it pass, David. I'll let it pass. Well, um, he said it's one time, David. Yeah. Uh, he says it's such a unique take on the character. Definitely doesn't feel like the typical version of Gamera. And he's absolutely right. It mm -hmm. does not feel like your typical Gamera. It feels completely different. So it is almost like it's a completely different uh, monster. Uh, Alex Sperling said Zidas and Gauss. Uh, monsters versus men. So this is going to be Eric, uh, who sent this in. Uh, he sent in Guiron or Giron, uh, is probably my favorite. Hard to beat the sushi chef ninja. It's true. <laughs> He's it's not really wrong. Great. And then Thomas Fairchild said, Iris, wickedly unique design matched by a formidable sense of apocalyptic doom. And that, that's a really great explanation because that is exactly what that feels like. Like you really do feel the sense of doom coming mm -hmm. from Iris. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Herrera said love Barugan from the Showa era. Uh, but when it comes to the Heisei era, he likes Gauss, the Heisei Gauss and Iris. And then the dinosaur King said Barugan and Zidas as his favorite, which are probably the two most dinosaur like ones from the Gamera trilogy, because Zedus is kind of like a, uh, almost looks like the Dilophosaurus spitting dinosaur from Jurassic Park. Yeah, sort of. It's like a, it's like a weird amalgamation of, of Dilophosaurus and a, uh, maybe an Allosaurus or something. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Some of our more, some of our, uh, our dinosaur head friends can, uh, probably be a little bit more specific than I about that, but, but yeah, yeah. That, that's what it looked like to me. Um, and finally we also had, uh, Gamera himself on Twitter tweeted out to us and said his favorite monster other than himself is Iris. <laughs> so that's, that's great. We, we so, heard, you heard it here from Gamera himself. So Gamera is showing respect to probably, I'm going to say his toughest opponent ever in Iris. Yeah, it definitely was one of the toughest ones. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, continuing with our questions, though, that we are to to get into our discussion about Gamera. Let's talk about the human protagonist now from the Gamera franchise. Who is your favorite human protagonist? I'm going to have to give it to Asagi from uh, the Gamera Guardian of the Universe specifically. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Asagi Kusanagi is just Oh man, she is so fantastic. Uh, and, and she's she's throughout the entire Heisei trilogy. So she's yeah, you know, she one is. of the main characters from that whole from all three movies. And the actress uh, Ayako Fujitani, she is fantastic. She's one of the best actors in that trilogy. And and it's not even to say that everyone else was bad. Like everyone did a great job, but she mm. was just stellar in those. Um, I love. She's so interesting. I love the way that she develops over the course of the three films. You know, she doesn't in the, in the third one, she doesn't end where she began with the first one. She actually develops and changes through the course of the trilogy. So yeah, I just, I really yeah. like her character. Yeah, absolutely. She's, <clears throat> excuse me. She's one of the more interesting characters in the franchise. And, you know, she's portrayed as um, sort of a younger adolescent, you know, teenage, teenage uh, girl. Um, which is not really uncommon with the Gamera franchise, which they did have a lot of throughout the Gamera franchise. They did focus a lot on, uh, on children. And then may, and then later on, they focused a lot on the, on, on kids of adult of more adolescent ages, like early preteen kids and stuff. But there's always been that element of, uh, of children and, and young people in the Gamera franchise. And it's just the fact, it's just the fact that it's so well done through her character throughout the Heisei series. Um, so now we're getting into the when part. We talked about who. Let's talk about when. So when did we first start watching Gamera? Um, starting with me 
particularly. Uh, w- what I remember as a kid is my parents going to rent a Godzilla movie because I was a huge fan of Godzilla since I was itty bitty bitty bitty. And I, I was young. And so I don't even know how old I was. And they brought back a movie that was not Godzilla and a monster I had never seen before. And it was Gamera. Uh, And, you know, of course, because these are parents who don't know the difference between Godzilla and Gamera. It's, it's all monsters in rubber suits. So to them, so they, you know, they just brought back whatever they could find. And I did watch it. And, and now I don't really remember much about what movie it was or what I even thought of it as a kid, but I do remember seeing it and, and uh, them bringing it back to me. Cause I guess, cause it stuck out to me. Cause I was like, this isn't Godzilla. What is this? <laughs> what? Um, but as far as like the, the first time I truly remember Gamera as a film uh, or watching it and watching a Gamera film and, and really enjoying it and remembering everything about it was Mystery Science Theater 3000 because Mystery Science Theater 3000 covered most of the Showa era Gamera films. Of course, they made fun of them and poked fun at, at some of the silliness of them, especially the American dubs that were available at that time. But even though Mystery Science Theater, like their whole shtick is making fun of these movies. I always felt like this was another way of enjoying these films. I never felt like, oh, this movie is terrible and and I shouldn't watch it because they're making fun of it. No, it actually made me appreciate the films because it's like, oh, I can watch something. And even if I think it's bad, I can still have fun with it. Yeah, exactly. And so that's what the Gamera Showa movies were to me. Um, so, Michael, when did you first start watching Gamera? Short answer, I don't know honestly. <laughs> so <laughs> I've always known of Gamera uh, growing up as a giant monster fan. It you, you just kind of find that stuff out as you kind of putter along in your journey through all the throughout these films. I want to say it probably was either uh, Viros or Zigra because I have a vague memory of watching uh, AMC or the sci-fi channel and uh, see and remembering a giant silver shark kaiju that could have possibly been Zigra. Um, but like you, Travis, I watched uh, Mystery Science Theater growing up. Mystery Science Theater growing up. There we go. And that was my first real exposure to Gamera. And we're, we're not alone because every, a lot of people we've talked to said that their first exposure to Gamera was through Mystery Science Theater. And then, you know, if you're not familiar with that show, basically they riff on, like you said, they riff on these movies. They, they celebrate the silliness of them and they, they just do it for the enjoyment of the viewer. And, you know, as you get older and you get more invested in this community and you get more invested in this genre, you start going back and and rewatching these in a more critical, serious light. And, um, and that's what I that's what I had to do probably about a year or so ago when I first started really getting involved in the in the in the Daikaiju community. Um, I was going back and just kind of rewatching some of these older films. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I've I've always known of Gamera. I have vague memories of Gamera growing up, but I can't really pinpoint exactly when I started watching Gamera. Uh, I can tell you that probably a year ago I started uh, watching Gamera more seriously. And not not necessarily taking them not necessarily taking them seriously, but actually going back and watching them for what they are, and not watching them to make fun of them. If that makes right. sense, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I know we uh, we covered Gamera versus Guiron uh, during the Kaiju Quarantine, our oh, our yeah, movie did, marathon we? that we put on for everybody. And, uh, I, I can't tell you how many times that we, in the process of watching that film and the process of reviewing that film and, and, uh, even me just in the chat, cause I was just in the chat, uh, broke out into the, the Gamera song from mystery science theater. <laughs> yeah, but, we did. Yeah. I was on that episode. I can't remember who I was with though. Uh, I, I know you were with you were with uh, the giant monster BS, I think, guy oh, and, uh, and and Chris from Garganchi Cast. And, yeah, yeah, and Chris from Garganchi Cast. Yeah, so yeah, th- and that was a lot of fun. Of course, anybody who's watched the Mystery Science Theater Gamera 
films, uh, their their versions of them knows the Gamera song I'm talking about. Gamera, Gamera, Gamera is really neat. He is made of turtle meat. We are eating Gamera. <laughs> I forgot the words. There you go. Thanks, Trevor. <laughs> I know, I know the words of that song. <laughs> now, okay, since you've been studying Japanese, now sing it in Japanese. Oh no, no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, so yeah, continuing on with our uh with our questions to to in, in our discussion, uh, what is your favorite Gamera film? So we've talked about, you know, the, our favorite kaiju from Gamera. We've talked about what we started, where we started with it, but what's your favorite film from the entire franchise? Oh boy. Okay. Uh, there's a lot to consider. Uh, there's like 12 films. And so there's not, yeah, there's a lot to consider here. A it's not as much as Godzilla. No, it's not. <laughs> right, right. It's a little bit easier choice than, than the Godzilla franchise. I'll give you that because that fluctuates uh, what I actually like. And I guess the camera fluctuates too. All I can tell you is it will not be super monster. Uh, <laughs> but if I had to pick, one film that I really enjoy. I'm just going to go with Gamera Guardian of the Universe. Yeah, that that's a good one. It's a good one. The first in the Heisei trilogy. First uh, in the Heisei trilogy. And that's probably, that's the one. I mean, although the other two, you know, Attack of Legion or Advent of Legion, however you want to, however you want to call it. And, and then uh, Revenge of Iris. Um, they're both fantastic examples of tokusatsu and and just kaiju film in general but i'm gonna have to go ahead and give it with the very first one in the uh in the um in the heisei trilogy gamera guardian of the universe just because i feel like it that one set the stage uh very very well and uh, and and did complete and utter justice to to the gamera franchise Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and, and I agree with you up until recently, I would have probably said Legion, uh, is my favorite because I do really enjoy Legion. I do really like Iris too. Uh, they're all really good, but you picked the first Heisei film. I'm going to pick the last Heisei film, uh, as, oh. uh, Gamera the Brave is probably my favorite because it's, it's just, I wouldn't have considered it until recently uh, when I watched it. Uh, I just watched it uh, last week when we were preparing for this, this podcast, uh, this episode, the film embraces, like you said, the, the Gamera uh, guardian of the universe does justice to everything that Gamera is and, and what he's about. I think Gamera, the brave also does that. I think Gamera takes everything that Gamera is everything, the formula that made Gamera memorable and cranked it up to 11, just dialed it right up. And because of that, I think it's my favorite because I think if you, it, the thing that, that Gamera is most memorable for is being cheesy, campy, and child friendly. Mm -hmm. And for good or ill on the show of films, that is the thing that Gamera is most remembered for. It is, yeah. For and better the fact, or for worse. Right, for better or for worse. And the fact that Gamera the Brave took that, the campy, cheesy, child friendliness, and distilled it down to the very basic essence of what Gamera is and made this beautiful film that is charming, that's heartwarming, it's not you know, offensive in any kind of way. And it's just this beautiful, uh, just, it just beautifully captured what Gamera is all about. And so I have to go with, it. I have to go with that one as, as, uh, as my favorite. And it's, that is completely, completely understandable. I know of a lot of folks that, that say Gamera the Brave is their favorite film. If I'm not mistaken, uh, David from the Kaiju Apostle says that, Ga that Gamera the Brave is his favorite uh, Gamera film. He loves the Heisei trilogy, but I want to say that Gamera the Brave is probably his favorite Gamera film. And, and a lot of people are like that. And yeah. 
and, and, and I might I might be biased because I really love turtles, and a big point of that movie is this kid having a pet turtle. So it's like, uh, you know, maybe it just appeals to me a little bit more because I love turtles so much. But I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we we also reached out on Facebook and and asked some people uh, what their favorite uh gamera film is so do you want to go through some of the ones that uh answered us on facebook yeah uh we posted this question to the kaiju groupie facebook group and i simply asked out of all the gamera films which one uh would you consider to be your favorite gamera film and we had uh we had quite a few answers and a lot of them are um a lot of them are pretty diverse. So, yeah, starting with uh, Jim Teal, uh, he said Gamera the Super Monster, um, you know, and Gamera Guardian of the Universe and Gamera the Brave. I can I can understand Gamera the Super Monster because, you know, Gamera the Super Monster, the, the very last film in the Showa era, I can see why that would be someone's favorite film. Uh, I'm not going to crap all over it. I don't personally like it, but I can see why. Because it what it... it what it does is it embraces all of the silliness and all the tropes accumulated accumulated throughout the entire Showa era of Gamera and just distills them all into one film. And I can see why people would enjoy that. I mean, uh, respect to you, Jim, for, for loving that movie. Yes. Uh, uh, Super Monster, I, I, I lovingly call it pooper monster (laughs) just because of how crazy and and bizarre it is but it 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 is one of those bizarre films because it takes it this was in the 80s and what was popular in japan in the 80s was the tokusatsu or superhero shows like ultraman kamen rider super sentai uh also in the 80s star wars was big so you know that's also influencing pop culture at that time and Mm -hmm. the giant monsters like Gamera were popular. And so someone who was just like, you have two interns at Daae walking down a hallway towards each other, carrying scripts. One is carrying a script for a, a uh, star Wars knockoff. One is carrying a script for a super Sentai kind of thing. And they bump into each other. All the papers for the scripts go everywhere and they just gather them up together and say, we're going to make this into a movie and we're going to put Gamera in there (laughs) because that is what is going on in this movie. It is everything. It has everything. It is star Wars. It is superheroes. It is giant monsters. It is everything in one movie and it is so weird i won't say it's bad people say it's bad i will not say it's bad it is weird and <laughs> i kind of like it for that <laughs> oh, 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 God. oh that is that drive is you have you made my day with that explanation because that is the <laughs> best explanation that anyone has ever given about the about how how super monster even could have possibly come to fruition. <laughs> but oh, anyway, oh boy. <laughs> moving so, on. So who else, who else gave us some, uh, <laughs> some of their favorite movies? <laughs> moving on. We've got Matt Parmley of the Kaiju transmissions podcast, uh, along with Kyle bird. Uh, he said Gauss and he said Gauss and Gamera too. So he, I believe he means uh, Gamera versus Gauss from 67 in the Showa era and uh, Gamera two uh, advent of Legion or attack of Legion. However, uh, whichever title you find uh, Brian Armstrong said the Showa gear on, which is Gamera versus gear on and the Heisei guardian uh, guardian, guardian the- universe and the brave. So all extremely good answers. Mm-hmm. Uh, respectable answers there. Uh, Michael Edwards, the original and Gamera too. So that's uh, Gamera, the invincible, or was that the American title? I think that was the American title. I think it was Gamera. The giant monster was the, was the Japanese title. Uh, so he, which is great too. I actually enjoy the 1965, the original Gamera film myself. Uh, I think it's uh, a lot. It gets a lot of, it, get, it catches a lot of crap for being just sort of a cheap, uh, uh, Gojira 54 knockoff, but you know, uh, it was, it's still enjoyable. So I recommend anyone, anyone go and watch that. And, uh, also mm-hmm. Gamera 2 Advent of Legion. That's what mm-hmm. uh, Michael Edwards said were his two, uh, favorite ones. Um, and then we've got Dino de la Fuente and Raiden, uh, 
uh, Akita. I didn't say Ikea this time, Raiden. <laughs> for the last time. Uh, but they said uh, Gamera versus Gauss and Guardian of the Universe, which yeah, and, and I both covered. We both covered those back to back on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, we did. We reviewed them back to back, and I put those two together because they literally just said the exact same thing. So that's why I said, well, D- you know, Dino and Raiden, put your comments together into one because it, you both said literally the same thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it, um, Matt. Matt Ottman, uh, it, he wrote in, it said, he says, um, a buddy of mine took me to a midnight madness showing of Gamera Guardian of the Universe when it was at the, when it was at the TIFF years ago. I'm not sure what TIFF stands for. I think that's the International Film Festival. Oh, oh yeah, duh. There we go. I think, I think that's what it is. Pro- you're probably right. Um, and then he goes on to say, I have a dim recollection of watching the earlier films as a kid on TV, but seeing it on the big screen was like an awakening awakening all over again. Gamera the Invincible is my favorite from way back in the day, which is again, which is again respectful. We're getting a lot of love uh, for Gamera Guardian of the Universe. So all great choices, everybody. Uh, Mm -hmm. And last, but certainly not least, O'Reilly Carroll, uh, he wrote in and said Gamera versus Viros or Gamera versus Virus, however you want to, uh, however you want to say that. And Gamera the Brave. So he agrees with you, Travis. Gamera the Brave is one of his favorite uh, Gamera films. Yeah. And, and and the thing I love about O'Reilly and why I always like uh, O'Reilly when he comments on these things is because O'Reilly is not someone who follows a crowd or follows a trend, he no. will, he's not afraid to pick something that most people don't pick. And so like out of everyone that we had, Viros was not picked as, you know, as their favorite film, maybe their favorite monster, but not their favorite film. And here he is. It's like, Hey, I love Gamera versus Viros. <laughs> so uh, Gamera versus Viros. Um, I will say it's an interesting movie. It's it's very much an, a very interesting movie. I will give it that. Um, it's not what I probably would pick as far as far as my favorite um, uh, Showa era film, but but yeah, it's uh, it's it's actually a, it's it's pretty good. Uh, the human the the Kinneys in that film, which Travis for anyone listening that doesn't know what a Kinney is, that is a a nickname lovingly given by the community to refer to the. Uh, to the children featured in some of these. Yeah. Early the child films. protagonists that the tend to be very child. annoying. <laughs> yes. uh, and then obviously I knew what he was going to say. He always talks about Gamera, the brave. He loves Gamera, the brave. And he, and I think he's quoted, I, I've quote, I'm going to quote him by saying, if you don't like Gamera, the brave, you don't have a heart. Exactly. Exactly. There's so much heart in that movie. It is so beautiful. I love it. So, yeah, I love hearing O'Reilly, uh, his responses for that reason, because he's not afraid to go against the grain and pick something that most people wouldn't pick. Um, Continuing in our discussion, now we're going to talk later on to close out the discussion about where people can go to watch the film. So we're not going to, this isn't, this question is not about that particularly, but what do you think is a good place to start watching camera? We mentioned there's like 12 films in the franchise. It just like Godzilla, there's a bunch of films. People are like, I want to start watching. Where should I start? What should be the first one I watch? I tried to put uh, a lot of thought into this. What I think would be a good cross section of gamma films that even if you only watch these gamma films you at least you'll get a good idea of what gamma is um so i would personally if i was going to make recommendations i would personally start with uh gamma guardian of the universe from the hey trilogy then i would then go immediately and watch gamma versus gauss from 1967 that's in the show era which i think we've talked about on a on a previous show where they sort of get, they start getting the formula right in that mm-hmm. film of what actually makes show a camera. So beloved. Um, and then from there I would go and watch the original camera from 1965, the camera, the giant monster or the Americanized version camera, the invincible, either one is acceptable. Uh, there you go. And then if you want more uh, show a camera goodness, uh, Gamera versus Gearon, because that's going to give you a, a little bit of a taste of the weird stuff. 
So if you're into that more, if you're into the more eclectic uh, kaiju films, go check out Gamma versus Gear On. Um, and then of course I would, I would, I would recommend anyone. If you're going to watch Gamera, you have to watch the trilogy. If you don't watch them, in, you don't have to necessarily watch them in order, but you have to at least have seen all the films in the trilogy at least once. And that's Gamera 2, uh, Advent of Legion, and Gamera 3, uh, Attack, uh, or Revenge of Iris. And I would actually mm-hmm. recommend you watch those back to back because it's 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 really, it's a really fantastic uh, trilogy. And those back to back work perfectly together. Uh, and then, you know, cap it off with Gamera the Brave. If you like, if you find yourself enjoying the Showa era Gamera, but you want something a little bit more modernized with a little bit more heart, watch Gamera the Brave because it gives you all the flavors of the Showa era Gamera, but without some of the the more annoying bits. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good uh, list. It's almost like the machete list when it comes to watching the Star Wars movies, how you, you know, you don't watch them in uh, chronological order. You watch them in a different order so that you can get the most out of them. Um, now for me, when I, I picked two films or well, not two films, but I, I picked two ways of going with it. If you are someone who is interested in watching Gamera and want to, to get an idea of what the original Gamera films were all about or what, what Gamera is most famous for. I'll put it that way. Uh, the movie I say to watch is Gamera versus Gauss from the Showa era, because like you said, and like we said in the review back in the day, this is the movie where they figure out the formula because the first two movies that come before this, this is the third in the Gamera franchise. The first two movies, they're still trying to figure out, are we going to make just a Godzilla knockoff or are we going to do something different? Right. And do. yeah. And, and, and Gauss is when they realize we've got to go our own way and do our own thing. Go your own way, go your own way. <laughs> You can call it a Gamera movie. Okay. Uh- <laughs> and you're right. You're right. This is where they get, this is where they start to get the formula of what makes Gamera Gamera correct. Because I think Gamera versus uh, Gauss was our introduction to our very first uh, child protagonist. It's mm-hmm. not necessarily as a, it's not a, a hugely prominent role as it would later become, but you know, this is where we get first introduced to a child protagonist in a, in a Gamera film because the, the two films that come before this Gamera, the giant monster and Gamera versus Barugon are a little, are on the more serious side. They, they do take right. themselves very, very seriously. Whereas Gamera versus Gauss, it, it leans a little bit more into the sillier campier stuff. Yeah. And that's that's where they really embrace the campiness. And like I said before, the the Showa era of Gamera gets a lot of flack from diehard kaiju fans because of how campy and silly and 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 they, of course the budgets kind of got cut later on so the the budget for special effects was almost non-existent um so yeah people do kind of uh give them a lot of flack for that but at the same time when you ask a diehard kaiju fan what they remember about Gamera, they're going to say it's the campy silliness and the kid protagonists. And that starts with Gauss. You know, the first two films didn't have that. That starts with Gauss and goes on from there. So Gauss is where they solidified that formula. Now, if you are, so if you're the type of person that wants to see that, that's where I say to start. But if you are the type of person who wants just the peak of Gamera, what Gamera's potential is, and also just not even not even a uh, um, peak Gamera, but peak kaiju filmmaking in general. Go with the Gamera Heisei trilogy. Those movies are better than any other kaiju film that was coming out at that time, even better than the Godzilla films. There are things in those movies that still hold up today, and they were made in the nineties. They are fan. Fantastic! I cannot, cannot, uh, just extol their virtues enough <laughs> the <laughs> because Gamera, they're so good. The the Gamma trilogy, the Gamma Heisei trilogy is, I would say it's revered as as probably the whole. Uh, this may be really really bloated language to some to to people listening, especially if you're not familiar with with this franchise. But 
the the Heisei, the Heisei trilogy for Gamera is revered as pro, as the holy grail uh, of kaiju films mm-hmm. during this during this era. And as a diehard Godzilla fan, now my, Godzilla is my first my first love. He was my gate he was my gateway drug into Daikaiju films and giant monster films in general. Uh, and I always will love Godzilla. But I will admit that the 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 three movies we got in the Heisei Gamera trilogy were light years light years better than what we got with the Godzilla Heisei tri- with the Godzilla Heisei uh, era that mm-hmm. part of the franchise and they did it on almost half the budget for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Gamera Heisei trilogy is peak Kaiju filmmaking, the way that it's filmed, the way that it's shot, uh, the camera angles, the characters, the writing, the set designs, the suit designs, everything is at a level that no other or very few other kaiju films reach. So if you think of in the, in the Godzilla franchise that come, that comes close to this and it's for good reason is GMK. GMK comes very, very close to being just as good as, as part as this trilogy. And And it's a, it's a good, yeah, it's for a good reason because the same director. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So that that if you if you're interested in a more modern uh, Gamera film, then you have to go with the Gamera Heisei trilogy. Just start with one and go through two and three. Just watch them in order because they're so good. But if you want the Showa and the campiness, get the feeling of what Gamera is all about, what mm-hmm. he's most remembered for. Go with Gamera versus Gauss. Um, and I also like I said, I like if you're going to watch multiple movies, you know, and make like a whole marathon. Uh, Michael's list, the way that he broke them down was really good. Um, so continuing on with our discussion, what should newbies to the franchise expect when watching Gamera? Uh, I'm going to go, since I, I think I kicked off the last couple of questions, Travis, so you, you go ahead and start this one. Okay. Well, um, so we already kind of mentioned it. I think that Gamera started out as a Godzilla knockoff, you know, I mean, really it was uh and not that's not detracting from it i think there's plenty there's plenty of godzilla knockoffs that are really good uh gorgo for example or um uh what's uh yongri yongri uh is really good so that's not taking away from it in any kind of way but it did start off kind of as a godzilla knockoff but gamera did eventually become a symbol for the kid-friendly campy side of kaiju films um which up until that point wasn't a thing really until Gamera did it. And then other Kaiju films, including Godzilla followed suit and started to do more kid friendly and campy things. Uh, So when it comes to the older Gamera films, I don't, don't expect them to be masterpieces because they're definitely not masterpieces. Um, They are definitely lower budget and uh, lower quality than your typical Godzilla film. Uh, as far as like the special effects and stuff, but they're good fun and they're kind of like the way that the 1960s Batman series is. And if you're the type of person that can watch the Adam West Batman and enjoy the silly campiness of it, then mm-hmm. you can watch the Gamera Showa era and really enjoy it. So that's that's what I, I want people to to expect when they're going into the Gamera's is is not a serious breakdown of what, what the Kaiju uh, films could be, but more of just fun, kid friendly adventures. Yeah. And I think I'm going to piggyback a little bit off of what you said, <clears throat> where Gamera is just, to me, Gamera is just fun. It's just fun. Uh, now, especially the show era. Now, granted, there are films in the franchise uh, namely, and we we we're talk we I know we're we're referencing the Heisei trilogy a lot, but that that it's for a good reason. Um, there are films within the franchise that have a lot of depth to them, and the the Heisei trilogy does do that. And I will even say, uh, it's not in my notes, but I will say that even Gamera the Brave has has a lot of depth and a lot of heart. Um, but if but overall, if you it, at the very least, Gamera is fun. At the very least, even even if you watch some of the the sillier, campier stuff, I can sit and watch it and still have fun with it. I can laugh, I can cry, I can uh, be a little bit weirded out by it. But 
at the end of the day, Gamera is just, this may be a cheap way to say it, but Gamera is, to me is just sort of escapist fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. It, it really is. Uh, and I think, um, I think that answers, you know, our next question, which was why do we enjoy the Gamera film so much? And it's because they're fun. It's mm-hmm. because they're fun. They they are different from other uh, kaiju films in in the in the way that they embrace the silliness and em- embrace the campiness of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. And uh, just to kind of repeat myself just a little bit, I enjoy. I try to enjoy all Dai Kaiju and Kaiju and giant monster films on some level. If it's if, even if it's just fun escapism, if I, or if it's like Shin Godzilla, which is very um, very serious and sort of a sort of seen, in my opinion, as a as a political satire of the time, uh, or the original Gojira from '54, or the original Gamera series, or the Heisei trilogy. Like I said, um, there's just a lot of reasons why I enjoy uh, Gamera in general. And it's really hard just to pinpoint one because it really just, it really does uh, depend on what kind of mood I am in at that moment of what I, what I'm looking for. And Gamera does have a, it's like Godzilla in a way it does have a fairly good variety of themes and moods depending on whatever, whatever you're looking for at that time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's getting into our next uh, question too. Um, and we need to kind of move, move through these cause we're, the episode's getting kind of long. Um, so the question uh, is how is Gamera different from Godzilla? And I think you're, you're right that uh, Gamera kind of is set apart from Godzilla. Um, yeah. He's, he is different. And so you, you should enjoy uh, watching those films and, and exploring something that's not your regular mainstream kaiju films. Um, You know, starting out, there wasn't really much difference, but the Gamera films set their own tone and style. Uh, Gamera as a monster, though, is almost always, in fact, I don't think that there's a single time he's not a protector of Earth. Um, Whereas, you know, Godzilla will fluctuate between being a destructive monster to being a defender of Earth. But... Gamera is always on the side of being a defender of earth. And I think that's something that's very unique about him. Um, Do you have anything else that you wanted to say? No, I I think you, I think you pretty much covered it. I mean, it's, I, I, there's no, I I can't think of a way that I would have said it differently, honestly. So how is Gamera just as important as Godzilla? We kind of touched on that already that, you know, he was hugely influential in, uh, in the, the kaiju genre, uh, making, you know, even making Godzilla want to be more kid friendly because they, they were, uh, trying to compete with the Gamera movies. They were hugely influential on a lot of creators and a lot of, um, you know, artists and filmmakers and stuff. Uh, they were inspired by the Gamera films that they saw when they were young, both the Showa and the Heisei ones. So I think that they are really important for, people who are wanting to get into kaiju films to to watch them yeah absolutely and i will say that one of the reasons why uh gamera is is just as important is because it's an alternative and i think in my opinion when we have when you have choices when you have alternatives that's a good thing Mm -hmm. everything doesn't have to be the same you can have variety and gamera does feel sort of a hole where it's more kid friendly, it's more family friendly entertainment. And even though the Godzilla franchise is, is that in some ways, it's not as it's not at the same level in that area as the Gamma franchise. And that to me is why the Gamma franchise is so important because it is, it is an alternative to Godzilla and some other Daikaiju films at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, our final question that we're going to answer here about Gamera is, where can people go to watch more Gamera? So uh, where do you think people can go to watch more Gamera movies if they are not familiar with them and listening to our episode made them want to go and watch them? Uh, Shoot. I mean, there's... I will say that there's a lot more ways to watch Gamera than what, than there, what there was maybe five or so years ago. 
uh, mm-hmm. archive.org you can which is a little iffy i understand that uh it's it's yeah you can find archive.org go there to their community video section you can find camera yeah uh, you also have the arrow uh, streaming channel you've got the arrow streaming channel which is the legal way to watch camera mm-hmm. uh, yeah you've and, also and, got tubi uh-huh. yep tubi so yeah and tubi is free uh they you know they have ads but they are free now the 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 only movies they have on Tubi are the Showa ones. They don't have any of the Heisei ones, uh, but they are on there for free, and you can just you can watch them with uh, uh, English subtitles. They have the Japanese version with English subtitles, and uh, I can c- confirm they do have the English subtitles. Mm-hmm. Yep, <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a story for that's a story. Uh, go back and listen to our uh, to our episode. Uh, oh, the Monsters vs. Men episode. We talk about it. it is, yeah, it's in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, Tubi is an option. Like I said, the Arrow streaming channel. We also have the Arrow Blu-ray set that's coming out. That if you want to commit to owning all of these films on Blu-ray, uh, it will definitely be worth the money that you put into it. Uh, if you are willing to put the money into it. So those are all, you know, ways that you can watch Gamera if you are interested. Uh, you know, and if you want, go find the, uh, on YouTube, go find the Mystery Science Theater 3000 episodes where they cover Gamera because those are fun. And yeah, they are, you know, poking fun at them and poking fun at the cheesiness, but it's still, it's still fun. It's still, you know, just lighthearted fun. Yeah. I, and I want to also mention something else too. It's not, you, it's not necessarily that you can watch the full movie, but if you kind of want, if you want to find a great YouTube channel that has already reviewed some of these Gamera films and you just kind of want a taste of what they're about to before you go and actually watch them yourself, uh, go check out up the Up From The Depths YouTube channel. He has already covered all of the Gamera films uh, and reviewed those. So if you want sort of a preview of what you're getting yourself into with Gamera, I say I suggest go check that out because he done an excellent, excellent job with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, getting into our final thoughts, just our final thoughts before we close out the episode and before we close out this whole discussion with Gamera about Gamera. I just wanted to say, you know, it's easy for people who are new to the kaiju community or j- kaiju genre uh, to write off Gamera as the goofy cousin to Godzilla. You know, he's kind of that redheaded stepchild that, you know, is off in the corner. But if you take the time to watch the films, especially the Heisei trilogy, which we talked a lot about you'll find it fun and rewarding i think you'll be mm-hmm. rewarded for yeah. taking the time uh so don't write gamera off just because it's a little campy and a little silly don't write him off he's one awesome turtle <laughs> that was what no, i wrote I, in my I, notes i 100 percent agree and um honestly i was talking with we or i was uh, uh watching a a thread a, a conversation thread on twitter the other day where they were discussing that maybe the even the Showa era Gamera films need to be need to be reevaluated because they're as as our friends at Monsters vs Men have have come to find out they're not as bad as what people would say they are. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Gamera has gotten a pretty bad reputation over the years as, as just being the very silly uh, bootleg version of Godzilla. But I to me that's that that's an unfair assessment. That's an unfair assessment. So. My only suggestion to whomever's listening is if you want to, if you want an alternative to Godzilla, if you're, if you, if you love Godzilla, but you want to explore a little, if you want to explore other avenues of, of Daikaiju film, check out Gamera. Uh, you will be rewarded if you, especially if you watch some of the show era first and then watch the Heisei trilogy, you will be rewarded. But if you only want to watch the hatred Heisei trilogy, because people love it so much, then so be it because there's really not a whole lot that can go wrong with just picking a camera, a random camera movie and just enjoying it for what it is. So, so yeah, it's, I encourage anyone that wants to expand their, their uh, library or their knowledge of giant monster films, please go check out camera and, and it's, it's absolutely worth it. Yeah. So that is our, con- uh, that's going to do it for our Gamera 101 episode. Now, this was just a discussion of the franchise in general. If you want to hear our thoughts on the movies, 
uh, specific movies of the Gamera franchise. We've already reviewed a few of them, uh, mm-hmm. so you can go back and hear our review of Gamera vs. Gauss, uh, Gamera Guardian of the Universe, right. and we're going to be doing more uh, Gamera reviews coming up, so definitely check those out. Um, if you are new to the podcast, we like to ask trivia questions at the end of each episode to uh, hint to the next week's episode. So the trivia question that's hinting to what we are going to be reviewing next week is what American monster movie has a festival dedicated to it that until this year, because of COVID was held annually in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. I had no idea what this was until I remembered and why oh, I, I had to go look at our notes for next week to realize mm-hmm. what you were talking about. Yeah, so there is an American monster movie that has a festival dedicated to it in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, and it's held every year. Um, This year it got canceled because of COVID, but every other year it's been held. So what monster movie is that? And if you would... Anyone will be a lot kinder to us as far as that, as far as that kind of stuff goes. Oh, hopefully, hopefully. Um, So yeah, if you are interested in answering that question, you can do that on our Twitter at Kaiju Weekly on Twitter. You can also check out the Kaiju Groupie Facebook group because we will post the question on there or on our Instagram. Uh, And all of the links to that will be in the description of this episode. Uh, So uh, because the episode is running kind of long, we're going to uh, just jump to the conclusion and we're going to say thank you to everyone for listening. If you want to follow the podcast on social media, you can do that. We are at Kaiju Weekly again on Twitter and Kaiju Weekly Pod on Instagram. Again, all the uh, links to the, to our social medias will be in the description of this episode. You can send questions, comments, or answers to trivia questions to our email, kaijuweekly at gmail.com. You can also find us at the Kaiju Groupie Facebook group. Also follow at Kaiju Groupie Pod uh, and the Kaiju Groupie on Twitter and Instagram. That is Michael. And we also want to say a big thank you to Shijir, Alex, and Thorax for supporting us on Patreon. You can also support the podcast at patreon.com uh, forward slash Kaiju Weekly. We have started doing a thing where we cover the news items for the week. Uh, we used to do a really long news segment each week, but we're trying to cut that down some. So we're now covering most of the news items over on Patreon. So if you're interested in hearing our thoughts on the new Common Rider video game or some of the new figures that are coming out, or maybe even some of the Godzilla versus Kong spoilers from the toys, you can check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash kaiju weekly pod and absolutely travis if and if people also want to support the podcast they can do so by leaving us a review on apple podcasts please if you want to be if you want to be a a kind person if you love what we do here and, and love hearing our beautiful beautiful voices and and love interacting with us please 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 go leave us a review on iTunes uh preferably a five star but we will accept uh maybe a four and a half uh, a four no, we will not four. we will not accept anything less than five. Oh, I'm sorry give, that's a, that, us, that apparently is a new whatever, policy. Give us whatever criticisms you want but make sure it's at a five star level. <laughs> exactly. And that, and what that does is that helps uh put us in front of other uh, giant monster and tokusatsu fans just like you. Yep. So we can be discovered by more people. Um, and so, yeah, that's going to close out this week's episode. So uh, to, I'm going to say, uh, help control the giant monster population, help control, or yeah, help control the giant turtle population is what I was going to say. Uh, have your gameras spayed or neutered. That's going to be some I- big turtle balls. Oh, boy. (laughs) Bye, guys. Bye.